How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It's Friday here on the show, and we've got a lot to talk about here today. You know, I'd like to sit here and talk about how our YouTube channel hit 100,000 subscribers yesterday. I'd like to see you and talk about how tomorrow, Black Label Pro, March 25th, Fight.TV. Or you can head to the building live, uh, myself and Filthy Tom Lawler, defeating the Bang Bros for the Black Label Pro Tag Team Championships. I'd like to talk about all of these things. How much I hate Oreo the Orca, and I'm absolutely sick that we hit 100,000 subscribers and all people can do is say, now can we have Oreo on the show? I would like to talk about all these things, but... We got to talk about CM Punk. Yes, we do. We got to talk about Punk. We got to talk about Vince McMahon. Who I tried to tell you, is back, at least to a degree. He's not all the way back, but he's sneaking his way back in. New AW television show, which should be debuting at some point fairly soon. Ronda Rousey, where has she been? Well, turns out she's out with a broken arm. Give the details on that. Dynamite ratings from Wednesday. Sakura Genesis now with an IWGP Women's Championship match. The former Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet, will be defending the title there. Ring of Honor Supercard of Honor. Injury to Josh Alexander. And so much more. So we got a lot to get into here today. If you want to text us, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com is the email address. And uh, we're going to kick it off after the break with all sorts of stuff to talk about. Mike Sempervivi here. So stick around, everybody. Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. In a now-deleted Instagram post... Former two-time AEW World Champion CM Punk gave his perspective of the build to his John Moxley matches, which included claiming Moxley didn't want to lose to him. He also accused AEW of asking him to wrestle without being medically cleared, in addition to calling both Chris Jericho and Dave Meltzer liars. The impetus for the comments appeared to stem from a comment Meltzer made on our message board that was, of course, shared all over social media earlier Thursday. Meltzer was replying to a comment and wrote the following. Do you know why they didn't advertise Punk vs. Moxley longer and why it had a short build? Because Punk agreed to it. Then AEW got a legal letter saying he wasn't down with it and wasn't doing it, and they didn't know if he'd come until Tony put his foot down. There are a lot of nice things I can say about him, and you can absolutely argue his position on Moxley was correct, but you can't argue he willingly did what he was asked in that scenario. Meltzer was referring to the build for Punk vs. Moxley all out, which saw Moxley defeat Punk in three minutes on the August 24th Dynamite. The fact that the Dynamite match happened was a surprise to many fans, as they assumed the first time they would see Punk wrestle following his summer foot surgery would be at All Out. Punk did defeat Moxley in their rematch at All Out to regain the AEW World title, which was eventually stripped due to him sustaining a triceps tear during the match, which preceded his now infamous post-event media comments, and subsequent fight with the Young Bucks. In a now-deleted Instagram post, Punk said he insisted he needed to be cleared from his foot surgery before he could return. But, quote, they kept saying it could just be a squash, so I didn't need to be cleared, which he did not agree with. Punk seems to credit the match and build to All Out to Moxley's Rocky Three idea that he thought, quote, sucked. He went along with it and also claimed Moxley wouldn't lose to him, a first in his career. He says, I wasn't cleared to come back to wrestle yet. Then, plan was to wrestle at the pay-per-view. I sat and listened to Moxley's Rocky Three idea. I explained how I'd never seen a Rocky movie. I and thought the idea sucked, but if the boss wanted to do it, whatever. He said he wouldn't lose to me. I've never experienced someone refusing to lose to me. I just laughed. I asked Tony if this was what he wanted. He said yes. He's the boss, so I said okay but I need to be cleared first. They kept saying it could be a squash, so I didn't need to be cleared. I scoffed at that. My health is more important. Dave Meltzer is a liar. Jericho is a liar and a stooge. 
There were plans, but plans always change. But I will never put a company above my health ever again. AW has yet to comment publicly about the accusations. Jericho shared a Instagram post afterwards, which was essentially uh, Matt Hardy saying delete because Punk quickly deleted his post. Punk's status with the company is unknown. He recovers from surgery for the aforementioned triceps tear. One point months ago, Meltzer reported Punk and AEW working on a buyout. And then uh, he appeared in the crowd as a spectator at battle in the Valley. Resumed his duties as a color commentator for a regional MMA organization. So, I don't even know where to start with all of this. But, you know... A lot of people have said, oh, man, he just needs to come back. Just come back and work a program with the Bucks and Kenny Omega, and everybody's going to make a lot of money. And I've been trying to tell people for months and months and months and months that it's, it's not that easy. It's not just, oh, come back and make a lot of money. I mean, I've been saying this for months, and Dave finally said it on Wednesday, and that is... Who's going to make money off of this? This is not WWE in the 90s. Everybody is not under these, uh, whatever they call them, downside guarantees. Nobody gets bonuses for house shows. Nobody gets bonuses for pay-per-views. There are zero bonuses. Everybody is on a guarantee. And so if the Young Bucks and CM Punk work together and business explodes, they make no money. Now, sure, granted, maybe when it's time to re-sign... Maybe they can get a better deal. Maybe they would. Maybe they won't. I don't know. But the idea that, hey, we're going to pop the house. Everybody's going to go. No, you're not going to make more money. No one's making any more money off of this. Okay? Then you've got the larger issue of people that really don't like each other. And they don't want to work together. And they don't want to have anything to do with each other. And the other thing, when people always go, oh, uh, Brian, Dave, take inside. Listen, forget. Forget any one side, okay? The fact of the matter is that the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho and John Moxley and all of these guys are very, very well liked within the company. They people love working with them. They they love them as as people. They have a lot. Forget anybody outside of AEW. Forget any reporters or anybody. These are very, very well-liked people. And they are being buried. They are being, we had a fight involving them. I mean, I've said, I don't think this guy is coming back. I don't know if he's coming back or not. It's very clear he wants to come back. He has not been released he has not been fired, okay? So I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm telling you right now, this is not going to be an easy situation to just bring him back. He's not going to walk in and everyone's going to be happy to see him. Sure, there are people there that like CM Punk. They're CM Punk supporters, and it's not just FTR. Obviously, they're big supporters of CM Punk. There are others as well, but they are... Anyway, and then, you know what is the most amazing thing about this whole thing to me, okay? Why, why was CM Punk, why did he call out myself and Dave and, and others, and why was he angry at the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega? Why did all, I'm not saying this, like, we are the result of all of this, but what was one of the things that really stuck in his craw? At that all-out press conference. Well, he was very upset about this Colt Cabana story. And he apparently believed that the story got out because the Young Bucks told the story to me and they told the story to Dave. Okay? I can tell you 100%. I did not hear this story from the Young Bucks. And Dave has said the exact same thing. He did not hear the story from the Young Bucks. And you know what's funny? is, You know who I first started hearing this from? 
Fans! Fans were speculating about this. Fans had heard things. I realize it's wrestling, but, you know, there's a lot of fans that they're on the periphery of this business and some are even inside. And everybody hears a lot of things. And the first I ever heard of this was from fans. And then I started asking around. And, dude, I heard, you know how many people in AEW had heard this story before this story ever got out on a big, like, this did not come from the Young Bucks. But that's what he had in his head. And I don't know if he is blaming Chris Jericho for telling Dave Meltzer about what happened over All Out Weekend. But when I look at this, it sure seems like that's what he's saying. And man, unless this guy has concrete proof that Dave Meltzer got this story from Chris Jericho, then we are literally in the exact same position that we were in in August where he is blaming somebody for telling Dave something that, quite frankly, I don't think Dave got from Chris Jericho. I don't know that, but I do know that I heard a lot of details about that weekend, and I didn't hear them from Chris Jericho. So it sounds to me like history is repeating itself here, which doesn't sound to me like this is leading in a very positive direction. We got more to talk about after the break. Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Try and dial it back here a little bit. Hey, do you know we got new affiliates? Yes. Wrestling Observer Live has two new over-the-air radio affiliates. 99 KMSR, 1520 AM. 99 KMSR, 98.9 Mayville, North Dakota. We'd like to thank station owner Craig Keating for welcoming us. And uh, hopefully this will be the beginning of a lot of fun. We'll open up the phone line sometime for folks over there in Mayville, North Dakota. But, hey, if you're even in the area, that uh, AM station, those AM stations have a big reach. FM does as well, but AM usually has a much larger reach. So 99 KMSR, 1520 AM. Uh, pretty much if you're anywhere I would say within several hundred miles. You should uh, tune in, see if you can grab it on your AM station. But uh, you can always check us out. The mightier 1090 AM throughout all of uh, Southern California as well. San Diego is a home base. So thank you to all of our radio affiliates. And hey, if you own a station and you want to carry the show, just DM me on Twitter, at Brian Alvarez, and uh, we'll hook you up with the good folks at Sports Byline USA. Used to be the Sports Byline Radio Network. That's how old I am. It used to be the Sports Byline Radio Network. Now it's the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. So, gotta make some changes. You have any comments on this punk thing, or can we move on now? <laughs> the only comment that I will say, because I will take myself out of all of the stuff that was that you had talked about at the beginning and everything, but it seems to be in the last two weeks or so, more and more scuttlebutt more and more rumor more and more talk about will cm punk return to the company the only thing that i would want to know is number one obviously you look at his claims and you go well okay if i had to ask tony khan a question i would say well did you want him to work all that sort of stuff is there anything being reciprocated where if cm punk wants to come back there's somebody on the other side of things that is actively talking to him about that if his Injuries are about healed up. He's not suspended Well, anymore. I'm sure we Tony's should, got to be talking we to We should him. assume, and that's where, that's the only thing I'm interested in to, to wonder about. Are you talking about a buyout? Are you talking about coming back? What are you really talking about? Because you can make a little money short term. You can make some real hot stuff and get some real attention short term if he were to come back. But as you mentioned, when your biggest stars are... Chris Jericho, Hangman Adam Page, John Moxley, Kenny Omega, and those people don't want to work with him. He may be. Who does he work talented. with? What does he do? Exactly. I mean, and you can do FTR is, and Punk in six man matches, but I mean. But at some point, people are going to want the elite. And the fact of the matter is, even if you believe 
that he's right, even if you believe in, in whatever happened with all this, because I don't know and I don't care, frankly, but even if you are 100% on his side, you take him, you put him in that company, is it better for the company long term? Is it better for the company short term? Is it better for him personally? Does he want to be involved in that when there's about a zillion other places he could wrestle if he still has that itch? Not the least of which would be WWE that I'm sure would welcome him with open arms and all sorts of things would change as long as he cuts a promo on the way back in. So I don't know what the answer here is, but I'm very interested to know from AEW. I would love to be a fly on the wall in Tony Khan's office to hear some of these conversations because I'd like to know how much he personally is entertaining the thought of bringing Punk back, and what will that mean for his locker room? Hey, listen, I don't know what happened all that weekend. I wasn't there. I don't know what happened. But what I can tell you is that in the wake of that all-out weekend and that brawl, I mean, I heard from so many people who he had so much heat after that weekend I don't care whose side fans are on. I don't care, okay? I don't care what side you think I'm on or Dave's on. I don't care. All I know is he had so much heat after that situation, okay? And after he was gone, everybody was in a much better mood, okay? Now, after Brian. that post yesterday... After that post yesterday, I am not making a statement on the truthfulness or anything about the statement, but I can tell you a thousand percent, there was so much heat yesterday as a result of that post. So it seems to me like we're in a situation where I don't see this being a positive if he's brought back. Maybe he'll be brought back and man, it'll just be the greatest thing that ever happened for business. But you know, I think we all see, you know, signs, and I do not see this as being a, a positive sign that Instagram post yesterday at all. I'm still, look, at that press conference, Tony Khan sat there, and CM Punk took all of the starch out of him and his company and took out his manhood and stomped it and took his pride and stomped it. I would have to figure at least maybe Tony Khan would disagree, but he sat there and there was a new owner. There was a new boss who really didn't know what to do in the moment. And that still as a, as a man, as a boss, that's something that I, to me, and I know it's wrestling. I know in business, you, you can turn the other cheek if there's, you know, a pocket to be filled. But like, I mean, that was pretty bad on the way up the door and just Tony Khan sitting there. And again, he's at fault because he sat there and took it, not saying anything while, while Punk ran down him and his company and his biggest stars. But like, I, I mean, to me, that's still one where I... Tony Khan has to answer that question if Punk comes back. Okay, what did he say to you? Because what were your real feelings that day? You know, getting squashed and being embarrassed and frankly, hopefully taking it as a learning lesson in front of, you know, God in the world. Dude, and forget the fight. Well, pretend that the fight never even happened. I mean, people were, were, he had heat for what he did at the press conference and what he had done to Tony and the way that he treated Tony at that press conference. I mean, I'm, I'm over this. Keep me out of this. This ain't my deal. Okay. I don't want to hear about it. I got other things I got to talk about. Third weekly AW television series could potentially be making its debut this summer. Andrew Zarian said AEW and Warner Brothers Discovery were finalizing a deal to add a third weekly in-ring AEW TV show to the schedule. Hour-long matches, Zarian hinted it would air on Saturday night. Dave Meltzer and The Observer had an update. He said unless something major changes, it will be premiering by July, if not earlier. The July 14th show in Saskatchewan, originally a Rampage taping, has been moved to July 8th where it is billed as a television taping, but not a Rampage taping. Tony Khan didn't comment on the change, which on the surface could be the idea of a new Saturday show, 
that has been rumored. The schedule in June has not been announced yet, other than the Canadian show, so we don't know if this is the first Saturday taping or the Saturday show will begin before this date. But the Saturday show is right now planned, and unless some, something major change, it'll be debuting at least by July, if not earlier. So it, it seems, it seems, I mean, until it's confirmed, it's confirmed. Until it's confirmed, it's not confirmed. But I do believe that this show is happening. I do believe it's Saturday night. I don't know if it is 6.05. That was obviously the the rumor was 6.05, but uh, but I, I, don't, uh, I don't know if that's the case. And I also don't have any of this confirmed, but I certainly have the impression that it is likely debuting before July, but I don't know that for sure. But I, I kind of have gotten the impression that it might kick off earlier than that. And uh, since people asked, yes, last night I said there was probably going to be a change for the Brian and Vinny show. And uh, there, there are actually going to be two changes. There is going to be a Tuesday change. And I am presuming, I am presuming that the Saturday show is going to be replacing Rampage on Sunday nights. Because I feel that it's probably going to be a higher profile show than Rampage. But we shall see. I mean, we don't have anything confirmed. It's not even confirmed it's going to happen. But I do believe it is going to happen. And uh, and I don't even know if it's going to be an hour. I presume it's going to be an hour, but uh, we shall see. Well, and you know what? I would be, as a fan, I would probably be a little cautious as well, too, because... You know, I thought, okay, if they're announcing a third show, they're thinking about giving me a third hour. I was kind of thinking the fall season. Not that this would be a bad thing. They're giving you an hour, you take it. But is this going to be a thing where it's just going to pop up in the summertime and will not be a part of the fall schedule? Is this something like a, they're looking at it like superstars on the super station, just a regular version of that. They used to come on, I think it was Friday nights. That's what turned into to power hour. But is it going to be a situation like that where you just have some one-off matches, maybe things from the house shows, as well as some original programming put on there? It'll just be interesting to see how it is and interesting to see what the commitment is. And if they say it up front that this is something that's going to be a regular on the schedule from here going forward. So here's the thing to me. We have a rampage, okay? We have a rampage. It's Friday night. It's 10 o'clock. It does, it does whatever it does, okay? I can't sit here and say it does poorly. Like, you can say it does poorly if you compare it to, like, a few of those times. Like, when I think CM Punk debuted, actually, on Rampage, and it did over a million. So if you look at that and then you say, well, it's doing, you know, 490, 520 or whatever, it's, you know, that's that's poor. But, you know, it's, it's – I would say that Rampage does all right. It doesn't do great. It's not like a complete disaster or anything like that. It does all right, okay? And I don't understand why you would add another Rampage so you would have two shows that just do all right, okay? I don't know what the time slot is. I don't know what the plan is. But the fact that they're they're considering adding another show and may for sure be adding another show, that tells me they must have some sort of idea that that this would be like a more important show than Rampage. Otherwise, you should already have Rampage. So that's my thought on on adding a third show. They must have some sort of plan to make it something bigger, which they are not doing with Rampage. Back in a moment, Observer Live. So here's a fun one. All right. Previously banned terms oh that had been reinstated after Triple H took over WWE Creative might be prohibited once again. A pre-taped segment for Raw on Monday had to be reshot after a performer used the word wrestling. Under Vince McMahon, the term had been banned from use in favor of sports entertainment and sports entertainer. It is not clear what pre-taped segment had to be reshot. Dave addressed the situation in the latest Observer, noting that it is the latest evidence of Vince McMahon's influence on the product. You know, it's funny. A couple of things are funny about this. So, do you guys remember when Cody debuted? He debuted, and Vince was still in charge. And Cody got away with saying wrestling and wrestler all the time. But he was the only one allowed so it's not like Vince absolutely positive. I don't know if, like, in Vince's mind, 
Cody's character is a wrestler. So he's allowed to say it, but everyone else has to say sports entertainer. But he has allowed it before. But the general rule is you must say sports entertainer and not wrestler. And, you know, people are going to believe what they want to believe. But, Young Dagan talking to you. But, no, no, Dagan, you don't understand. Dagan, Dagan, I don't know. I'm not sure if Dagan understands what I'm saying here. Vince, since he announced that he wanted to be back, he has been eking, I don't know if that's the right word, He's been sneaking back, okay? He's he's he has been putting his uh his uh hand in the honey jar. Is that the term? Probably not the yeah. right term with Vince. C- cookie jar. Whatever it is. But so, uh the fact of the matter is he's he's been he's sneaking been his way back. He's been his way back okay? in, boss. Now what's happening is what's happening is that there 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 are people that everyone has to be on not everybody, but people are they go to the extremes. There are the people that are like he ain't back at all. He's just visiting John Cena. <laughs> well, Cena hasn't been there in weeks. Doesn't matter. That's why he's back. That's what they said. Okay, fine. He's just there visiting Cena, whatever. Then there's like the other side that goes, he's totally back. He's doing everything. Wrong. It is exactly what I've been telling you guys. Hunter is still in charge of this show. But Vince is back. And Vince may actually like have certain storylines that he's fully in charge of for all I know. But Vince is not back running the show. And you will the only way you will know he's back, because he's he's physically been there now, the only way you're gonna know he's back is when every week nothing that they advertise takes place. Everything gets changed on a weekly basis. The script is ripped up every Monday and totally rewritten. It's not done by the time they go on the air. That's when he's fully back, if that ever happens. That's not the case right now. They advertise matches on a Monday. They do the matches the following Monday. They advertise matches for SmackDown. They do the matches for SmackDown. As long as that happens, Hunter is still the guy. Now, do I think Vince is in charge of this Oma? Of course he is, okay? Do I think that Vince is probably in charge of this whole Otis Maximum Male Models deal? Of course he probably is, all right? People are like, just because Becky was wearing a weird outfit, dude, the moment Triple H showed up, she was out of that outfit. Now, this guy's back visiting John Cena, and she's magically in this goofy outfit again. Why and is she not big time? She doesn't chew big on popcorn. time anymore. I mean, don't big even time. tell me that ain't a Vince thing, okay? Troglodytes. He is doing some stuff, but he is not taken over. He's not in charge. I'm sorry if you don't want to believe that. That's fine, but that's the truth. Now, here's the thing. I didn't pull professional wrestling out of smoke-filled buildings for it to be called professional wrestling. Here's the thing. It was terrible, Vince. Because I'm a fair man. You, well. I will say that given what Vince McMahon has been accused of. I am appalled that he is back in any way whatsoever. (laughs) Remember he came back, he was going to facilitate the sale? Yeah. Yeah, right. But anyway, I am appalled that that is is the case, okay? But if, if that had never happened, if that had never happened, and Vince was merely a 77 year old guy I don't have a problem with the idea of somebody else being a head of creative and doing long-term storytelling, getting a lot of input from Paul Heyman, and Vince kind of being given something to do, okay? I don't have a problem with that. Like, listen, the whole Maximum Male Models thing, it's like nutty and everything like that, but what was Otis and Chad Gable doing before? But Brian, they went out there, they had matches, no. they lost. It's like now Otis thinks he's a model, and it's like, who cares? You have one thing like that on the show, I don't care, okay? When when they first announced it was going to be Brock Lesnar and Omos, it was like, oh, my God. But then, you know, it turns out that they wanted Brock to wrestle Bray. Brock said no. Then whatever happened with Bray happened. 
And so, you know, they decided Brock and Omos. And on the surface, when you first heard that, it's like, well, that's obviously a Vince thing. Oh, my God. But then when you think about it, it's like, I actually cannot wait to see this ridiculous match. It's a ridiculous match. It is two giants that shouldn't be in the ring together doing a match. And it's just going to be like, and you know what? Who cares? It's one match on WrestleMania. I don't care. That's all I'm saying. See where you're going with this, though? But that's the problem is you wouldn't care if he came back and it was just one thing with just Otis because, you know, dumb thing with Chad Gable and the dumb maximum male models. But then it's like, well, L.A. Knight, who Vince was not particularly a big fan of, and I would think he would be right up his alley. But L.A. Knight just just continues to play the fool. Probably, again, I don't know what his top shelf is there but i don't but he was doing that before vince came back the thing is then it's like well then you say okay well then he got involved with omas and brock because that would be a and then it just continues on so you should have a problem with it because i do have a problem with it i said i've appalled the guy is back i know but here's the thing when has vince mcmahon even if things were even if he had the most sterling record in the world you look at his creative and you kind of look at where he ended up and it's like if he comes back in, he can't not have full control. I know and that's, that's a disaster. All and I said, all I said was, in theory, I in if theory? Vince had never done any of this, I don't have any problem with him getting a program or two every pay per view cycle to give him something to do. That's what I said. Now, obviously, he shouldn't be there because he actually did what he did, mm-hmm. and he's not going to be able to control himself. So yeah. it's a disaster. It but is. my general statement was, you know, if Status quo was status quo, and he was going to get two programs every pay-per-view cycle, and that's all he was going to do, and Paul was still in charge, and Paul was helping Paul, you know, the Paul brothers, even though they're not brothers. (laughs) I guess. I just think of it sometimes when it's like Ted Williams in baseball. Ted Williams was a great hitter in baseball. He They tried to make him a manager, and he couldn't manage because he could not understand – you know, how these guys couldn't do what he could do. And he was one of those guys that wanted all of the power in the organization and he'd make all of the moves. And when you have guys like that, you'd, sometimes you can't just go, okay, look, we're going to put you in charge of player development over here, a vice president of that, because you we can use you there and you could be beneficial. When you have somebody like Vince, who is the orb in the whole room and just cannot help himself, to me, you cannot even give him a little bit of creative because then he can't help himself. You have to cut, I don't want to say like cut out a cancer and you have to do it like that, but you have to cut out the cancer and remove it completely. Otherwise, you're going to get what you've always got. You know, I'm sure part of it is that someday I'm going to be 78. And I hope whoever's running this site's like, ah, give the guy a segment here and there. Who cares? I'll come on and go, ah, start yelling about some stupid thing and, and it'll be done, and I'll Out go way, back to painting or whatever I do here. back then. Exactly. Put it back in the corner. Exactly. <laughs> well, what else do we have here? Ronda Rousey confirmed reports she has a broken arm. Fractured her radius, which is one of two bones in the forearm, it says here. The radial. At WWE's house show. No, the radius. At WWE's house show in Rockford, Illinois, February 26, 2023. Just coming in having no ACL or cartilage in her right knee due to injuries first suffered as a teenager. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> How do you train, she says, with no ACL or cartilage in your right knee as well as a fracture radius? Focus on what you can do. I have some of the most versatile training routines on earth. I need to do PT, build strength, retain flexibility, train technique across multiple disciplines, sometimes in a single session. After over two and a half years of combat sports, boy, is this true. The smallest misstep could result in surgery. Great. Literally. Did I have to read that today? How are you feeling? You're less than 24 hours away now, boss. Don't ask. Two weeks after my ACL reconstruction at 16, my mom had me on the floor doing push-ups to teach me a lesson. You can sit around and feel sorry for yourself or get your mopey ass and train with a vengeance. And so she is, uh, she's training now, but probably not doing push-ups would be my guess with that arm injury. I wonder if Rhonda's mom ever met Todd Marinovich's dad. Dynamite uh, on Wednesday. Good number, 954,000 viewers, up 12% from last week. Best audience total for the show since February 22, 0.33. 
in 18 of 49, up 22.2 percent from the week prior. Ranked behind two NBA games on ESPN, and man, that Vanderpump rules! Golly, that's the new Below Deck. Can you imagine if that was on Below Deck? That show? Oh my That'd god! That'd be number yeah, one on cable. Ran out the boat. Oh man. Yeah. Dynamite ratings were up in every single demo, with the exception of people over 50, which were even with last week. Biggest increase, females 12 to 34, up 45.5%. Guess they like those good-looking Hispanics. As compared to the last week in 2022, Dynamite was down 8.8% in overall viewers. If you watch the quarters, it was actually very, it was a very good night for quarters. So sometimes you'll have like that big lead in and then it kind of goes and then falls off and then kind of trickles down. This was kind of uh, pretty stable through the whole thing. So, uh, you know, it's always funny. The rating comes in and then everyone decides who they want to attribute it to. Oh, it must have been QTB. Oh, it was uh, for sure that Vikingo match. Oh, it was the uh, angle with the uh, Young Bucks and Hangman. Actually, it was basically everything. Everything on the show, people just watched. Very stable. And uh, that's the number. I honestly thought I'd get a text from somebody in WWE. There were three people I was thinking. Oh, here we go. Rio! It was daylight savings time. That's what it was. It was really daylight savings time that helped him out. (laughs) Well, you know, we'll find out. Yeah, poor second quarter, and then everything picked up in hour nine. Sure. Must have been Stokely getting killed. Well, maybe it was, actually. I'd tune in for Stokely. Not actually, that killed. match was a lot of fun. Yes. And Stokely looked like he was having the time of his life getting absolutely brutalized by old Hook. Well, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> we'll find out this weekend when Listen. you get pitched up in the air and land on a barrier rail. I think I'm taking bumps. <laughs> Ring of Honor, Supercard of Honor, Sakura Genesis. Top matches after the break. Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Man, big match is coming up. Sakura Genesis. Mercedes Monet has been added. Zumi and Hazuki in a three-way for the IWGP women's title. Our main man, Iho Del Vikingo, has been added to Supercard of Honor. He defends a AAA mega title against Commander. And, of course, March 25th, Black Label Pro tomorrow on Fight. It is, in fact, myself and filthy Tom Lawler. He's my bump guy. We're going to be facing the Bang Bros, Black Label Pro Tag Team Titles. And, uh, man, I've been training like crazy. I got fives on each side of the leg press. Because when you get to be my age, you got to take care of those knees. Oh, my God. And, uh, yeah, been uh, doing a lot of walking. It's healthy exercise, they say. P- power walking? Like, actually, like. I don't do the thing with the arms that you see people do. Like but... your heart rate up and all that? Like... Well, sure, of course my heart rate gets up. What do you think I'm sleeping while walking? But anyway, that's going to be tomorrow. You can check it out on Fight. $8, I believe, is the cost on Fight. Or I think that Fight, uh, if you got that Fight thing where you can get everything, I think it's on there. $7.99, Fight Plus? Fight Plus, yeah. yeah. So that's going to be awesome. And uh, I'll come back here on Monday and we'll have a big party. I'll have a party for you guys on Monday. The VIPs get the Sunday party, but you guys can have the Monday party. We'll put it right up over there near the uh, 100,000 silver plaque. Or whatever they call it, silver producer plaque for YouTube. We hit 100,000. I would like to thank my Twitch homies for hitting 100,000 on YouTube, but not the people in the YouTube chat, because, man, I bet none of them hit that subscribe button when I asked, because they're all heel viewers, is what they are. Cowards. But anyway, we got to uh, head out today. So uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Back on Monday with more. Jim Valley's up Saturday, Andrew Zarian on Sunday. And uh, it's going to be a fun time. So thanks, Mike. Jim will talk about stardom chat. Callers and listeners over the studio. Talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.